Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this presentation about geology and epistemology. My name is Luca Fava and I'm a geologist working in the oil business since 2002. The title of this presentation is Geology and Inverse Problem, and I hope the meaning of this title will be clearer as we go along with the presentation. I'd like to start with a tribute to my PhD tutor, Professor Emiliano Mutti, a very well-known Italian geologist, particularly famous for his work with turbidites. I'm very grateful to him because he is the very person that changed my life teaching me to love geology. If I have passion for this job, it's thanks to him. He's a great geologist and a wonderful teacher. Let's move now to a small story related to him. At the very beginning of my PhD, he took me in front of an outcrop like the one in the picture. He brought a folded chair. He told me to sit down, clear my mind and wait for a kind of metaphysical connection with the rocks. Eventually, the rocks will talk to me and they will tell the history of their origin. I was quite skeptical and confused at the beginning, but I did try to do what I was told to do. My puzzlement increased with time because nothing happened. Rocks didn't talk to me and my first reaction was that maybe there was something wrong with me, maybe I'm deaf. Then I thought that maybe the problem was with him because it was simply crazy. And then uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, rational questions about the status of geology as a science and about the scientific method came to my mind. How we know what we know? How can we know if the answer we have found is right? For example, let's assume that the rocks talk to me. How can I know if they are telling me the truth? How can we share with other people our knowledge? That's a very important point for me. Intersubjectivity. There is no knowledge without intersubjectivity. Basically, all these questions were about our knowledge, its nature and its foundation. So I left the outcrop with a lot of confusion, many questions and a strong desire for finding answers, my own answers. I think a good teacher is the one gives you no answers, but more questions. In other words, a good teacher gives to the students some input to start a quest, a journey in search of uh, truth. I guess this was also Professor Muti's goal when he brought me to the Yacht Group, and I'll, I'll be always thankful to him for that. Thanks to those questions, I started my journey in epistemology in search for answers. Epistemology, as you know, is the branch of philosophy concerned with what knowledge is and how it can be acquired. At the very beginning of this journey, I met, even though only virtually through his books, another person that had a tremendous impact on my life, Sir Karl Popper. Someone said that the best book ever is the one that tells you what you already knew. That was exactly my feeling when I read Popper's book, Logic of Scientific Discovery. It was like uh, having finally explained in a very clear and methodical way my own thoughts. It was a sort of revelation, if you want, but it was only the beginning of my quest for truth. Now, my ideas are slightly different from those of Sir Carl, but I'm still very thankful to him. In this presentation, I would like to give an overview of the results of 15 years of search. After all these years, I will, know, I will now answer some of those important questions as follows. First, geology is a science as all the others. There is only one scientific method. This is, a, this is a very important point to always keep in mind. Then I will explain that science is divided in two main activities, creation of new ideas and most important, the control of those ideas. Third, the third point is the, the, the take-home message of my talk. Geology is mainly dealing with the inverse problem and we will see later on what that means. This is the most important result of my quest, as you can see from the title of the talk. The last point is that interpretation is a particular kind of inverse problem. So to explain what I mean, I will start with my concept of science. How can we define science? How can we discriminate between science and other kind of search for truth? Philosophers 
have discussed this problem for centuries. My answer to this question are as follows. Science involves two main activities, creation and control. Those two activities are complementary. On one side we have creation, meaning the generation of new ideas, hypotheses and theories. This can be done in many different ways. New idea can be created by analogy, and that's very common in geology, by pure speculation or even by induction. This is a subjective activity, very similar to art. It is in this part of the scientific activity that genius plays a major role. To define in details how this part of the science works is behind the scope of this presentation. So let's move instead to the part that really characterizes science, meaning control. That is a, an intersubjective activity where the new ideas and hypotheses generated, no matter how, are tested against facts. This is the real scientific method. The scientific method starts with deduction of some predictions according to the hypothesis and continues with observation that allows comparing actual data with those predictions. Assuming this definition of science, geology is a science as all the others. There is only one scientific method, the one using mutual rational control of theories. And that's why I said before that inter intersubjective control, intersubjectivity, is very important. So geology is like every other science. The only difference is that geology is mainly dealing with inverse problems. 